Alright, so for this tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to use Turbulent Displace to uh, achieve like a cloudy effect on your illustrations. So I just have a very simple blue background with a pin tool cloud that I just did in After Effects, which I'm sure if you did it would look better in Illustrator. And basically you just come up to the Effects and Presets panel and type in Turbulent Displace. And you can either drag it onto the object or the layer down here. And this is something that I've used in my first animation with trying to simulate the string physics on my light and with my second to make a cool like wavy distortion for the clouds to make them a little bit more believable so they're not just like swaying back and back. Um, so yeah, as you can see once I drag that onto here, it immediately distorted it and kind of made everything a little bit wavy and it brought everything down. And you can do a ton of animations with this. You can either uh, control it from the top left or in the actual timeline down here, which is usually what I do. And I like to keyframe the amount, size, and complexity. That's pretty much all you'd need for a cloud. I mean, you could do other things, but I don't think it would be necessary. And basically, let's just go to like three and a half seconds, re-keyframe a second position. And yeah, if you drag right, it brings the cloud down, and if you drag left, it brings your object up. So you can play with that. You can make it undulate up and down in between separate keyframes. So let's make it go up a bit. And for the size, this actually affects like the waves of distortion. As you can see, like it distorts it much further because the like actual strokes of the distortion are pushing it away. But if you get small, you can see the object starts to be get like really wavy in these little increments, which can be cool. Like if I guess if you're doing water or like a jellyfish or something, that'd be cool. And complexity is basically the amount of uh, detail or the amount of like waves in the distortion it actually has. So if I crank it all the way up, you can see it looks kind of jittery. So I usually like to keep that lower. And even just like this, it already looks nice. It's just simple, kind of flows in the wind. And obviously it stopped there because I don't have anything else. But since we moved it up a bit, now let's come over here and keyframe it again. And let's move it. Oh, whoops, wrong thing. Size. Let's move it kind of like this. Move it a little down. It's really just a matter of playing with it to see how much you like. And let's turn complexity about the same. So now it kind of moves up and then it kind of distorts and comes back down a little bit. But it's always safe to just put an easy ease on every single keyframe and it'll look a little bit more natural when it's transitioning between the positions. And yeah, that's pretty much it. It's a simple tool, like you can do a lot with it, you just have to really experiment. Evolution changes like how many times it uh, moves in a certain amount of time. Like as you can see here, like 35, it's a little bit more sporadic. I'm actually not sure what all this is. Uh, let me try it out. I guess it's just, instead of just turbulent displacement, you can just switch it to bulge or twist, a ton of other stuff. And I guess t bulge is a little bit more like, uh, like rugged, I guess. I guess that's what this is. But yeah, I haven't experimented with everything, but there's a lot you can do with it. I think turbulent displace is still the easiest to wrap my head around. And yeah, that's it.